For today's video, I want you guys to answer in the comments down below, what do you think is a better investment? Putting your money in the US stock market or putting your money into your garden and invest in growing some of your own food at home? Tell me which one is better in your opinion in the comments down below. Hey everybody, this is Jake Mace, the vegan athlete. Today, I am the vegan man and this is the vegan athlete gardening channel. Thanks for joining me today. We have a very special episode like none other I've ever produced before because we have a very special tree to plant today. I'm gonna to show you guys exactly how I plant it, what the soil is going to be to make the perfect environment for growing conditions for this rare tree. And also I'm gonna come back to you guys with updates every month to show the progress on how the tree is maturing, how it's thriving, and how it's fruiting, and how it does in different climates and different temperatures throughout the year. I'm in Tempe, Arizona, which is a city right next to Phoenix, so pretty much we're in Phoenix. And I have a nice pineapple guava bush here. I have a nice Autumn Royale grape here. I got a nice shade sail above you, you guys can see that shades this area from the western sun, the hot 120 degree sun. And right here, in this pot, I was given a gift by somebody from the Arizona Rare Fruit Growers. And this gift is a mango tree, and this one says Antonio on it. Antonio, Antonio. Who is this Antonio? I don't know anybody right now named Antonio, but I do know that this mango tree is called the Antonio Mango Tree. And the reason why this mango tree is special is because Apparently, it's supposed to be one of the most cold tolerant mango trees on the planet. So I've got about a half a dozen mango trees here at my yard called Longevity Gardens, my backyard, front yard, edible landscape. And they do really well in the summertime, really well in the spring, really well in the fall. But the issue is that when it drops from the 30s into the 20s, the mango tree starts to go, hey dude, what the heck's going on? I don't like this cold weather stuff. And we got to cover them, we got to Make sure that they're all cozy and tucked in for the winter. So this mango tree apparently can handle the colder weather and has been said to be able to take weather in the mid 20s. So that means in Tempe, last year we got a few days that were 28, 29 degrees. And then a lot of days in the low 30s, mid 30s and upper 30s. So that means that this winter, if it drops into the 28, 29 degree range, this guy should be just fine. He should need to be covered. He should be able to produce flowers and fruit despite the weather being in the mid 20s. And I don't know much about it besides that. I do know that a guy named Tim Thompson is the guy who has been cultivating this particular variety of mango tree. And Tim's story from what I know is that he favors the Indian varieties of mango trees uh, in terms of their cold hardiness. He thinks that somewhere long ago, the glaciers and global cooling happened in that part of the world by India, and the mango trees developed a genetic tolerance to cold weather. So he has been planting thousands and thousands of Indian varieties of mango seeds, and then from those thousands of thousands, he puts them out in the cold weather once they reach about three or four feet tall, once they grow into trees. And out of the thousands of seeds that grow into trees, only about 25 to 100 make it. So maybe Tim Thompson has developed the most cold tolerant mango tree, or maybe he's just a serial murderer of all mango trees. <laughs> because 90% of the trees have been dying in the cold, but then he'll preserve the mango trees that made it, and he'll use those ones to repeat the cycle all over again the next year. And so for the last several years and years and years and years, this guy Tim has been trying to cultivate only the mango trees that can take that cold weather and from those years of cultivation, he's come up with the Antonio. So I've got one of these Antonios from the Arizona Rare Fruit Growers, and they're really excited about us planting this on video so that we can track the progress of this tree from the pot into the ground and over the next years and years at my home here in Tempe, Arizona. Check it out. That is east. The sun rises over there. That is west. The sun sets over there. And in the winter time, the sun goes low on the horizon over here. So we're gonna choose this spot right here to plant this mango so that when the sun goes low on the horizon in the winter time, this guy still gets pretty good sun exposure. In the summertime, this grapevine, these pineapple guavas, and this shade sail 
will protect this guy from getting scorched by the 120 degree heat of the summer in the Phoenix area. So we thought that this would be a great spot to not only give him a little bit of protection from the 120 degree heat, but to also give him a lot of sun exposure in the winter time when it's colder. And that way we're giving this guy the best fighting chance in order to make it and grow into a mature mango tree so that I can enjoy some delicious Antonio mangoes. So first I'm gonna take this guy and pull him off to the side and let him rest over here. Chill out mango, sit, sit. I'm gonna put my shovel to the side for a second and grab, and grab my rake. And I'm gonna rake out all these wood chips. See all these wood chips I got? I've spread over 1,200 cubic yards of wood chips on my property over the past four years. And I need to rake these wood chips out of the way so I can get back to the native earth and the native clay. You guys can see there's quite a lot of mulch on the ground. That's good because that's gonna to help to improve my soil and create a civilization of microbes beneath the soil. So I'm really gonna rake these wood chips pretty far away because I need to also create a water basin when I flood irrigate this guy with bubblers. And look at how the deeper I go, the more dark the soil gets because now we're in year three or four of this wood chip experiment and the wood chips from the first year are starting to break down pretty nicely there we go even though we're in phoenix and we get very little rain my soil because of the wood chips is retaining a good amount of moisture compared to my neighbor's house which has no wood chips so that's going to be the location of this antonio mango tree and we've got a bubbler for irrigation right there. So that bubbler is going to water these pineapple guava called the Fajoa and also this Autumn Royale grape. So the way that I dig this hole is really important. Also, what I put in the soil is very important. You guys can't just plant this mango. You gotta play God a little bit. You gotta create an environment that is just like Mother Earth for this mango tree. So I do a lot of martial arts for a living and we always train with weapons in the martial arts. And in gardening, we also have weapons. They're just not swords and bow staffs and nunchucks and stuff. The weapons of a gardener is this stuff right here. We've got some sand, which is gonna help us create good drainage. We've got some organic worm castings that are OMRI listed organic, which is black gold. One of the most important things, worm castings. We've got some compost, but not that much, just a little bit. And this is compost that I actually made on site in my Joraform compost tumblers. And it's pretty nice looking, pretty broken down. It's got a good ratio of carbon to nitrogens. And this compost is gonna go in the bottom of the hole to try to jumpstart the microbial life in the hole. You don't wanna to add too much compost, just enough to get some microbes going. Then I've got these two things right here, and these two are the same thing. I have one in a bucket and one in a bag. This is some really good soil for trees that I picked up from Seamus O'Leary's Tropical Fruit Trees in uh, Phoenix and Glendale. And what Seamus does is he is a nut about trees, and I love that about him. He's all about creating a soil for the trees that not only keeps the roots wet, but at the same time allows amazing drainage to happen. And so he combines, check this out, look at this. He combines some lava sand with lava rock, with composted mulch, different sizes and different kinds of composted mulch into a mixture that we're going to mix with the native clay that's in the soil now. And we're gonna create a moisture retaining yet very high draining soil, perfect for this mango. So that's gonna be very important. And then we have the wheelbarrow to mix it all up in with some secret things that I'm gonna tell you about as the video progresses. So don't click away, watch the full video and share this video with all your gardening friends, especially those who love to eat mangoes. I'm gonna start digging this hole now, then I'm gonna send my lovely wife Pamela, who's filming this episode in the house to uh, take a break while I finish the hole. The key to a good hole is to make the water basin. 
So as I'm starting to dig the hole and I'm pulling out shovelfuls of dirt, for me, this is the Jake Makes method. I don't just throw the dirt aside. I begin to construct a berm around the hole that's going to allow the water to stay by the root zone of the tree when I finally water them. I don't want the water to run off somewhere else. And that way also when it rains, this will kind of pool up and create a really nice catch for the rain. So you guys kind of get what I'm doing here, yeah? Shake your head yes, you guys got it. I have other videos on my YouTube channel that show this process as well. And I'm gonna get to finishing this hole and I'll come back to you guys in about five minutes. We got our hole dug. And I got the water base started on this side because I don't wanna make it all the way around because the flood irrigated bubbler is over there. I want it to flow down here and I'll continue the water basin around the grape and the pineapple guava. Number one question I get sometimes from people when they see plants close together is, hey Jake, aren't the uh, roots gonna compete with each other? Well, not in this case. A grapevine doesn't have very invasive roots, neither does the fajoa. So they're gonna serve as little friends, little girlfriends and boyfriends for this Antonio. And they're gonna exist together and be companion plants. Now it's 110 degrees outside right now. It's August the 18th, 2015. And I'm sweating bullets. So I swear to God, Tim, I don't know who you are, but if this tree dies in the 20 degree temperatures and I waste all this effort in the heat, I'm gonna be pissed. No, I'm just kidding. I'll be fine with it. So here's the little tricks from Jake Mace. We got the hole like this. I think it's big enough right now, but just to make sure, I'm gonna hit it a few more times at the bottom with this pickaxe and break up that clay in order to give this guy some loose soil to extend his roots into as he matures. Now, I broke up the bottom and the sides and I've given this guy a nice loose soil that'll give him a great home to stick his roots into. So let's measure it. <clears throat> that is the size of the pot and that's the size of the hole. That's gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna bring the soil level up to about here and keep this berm about six inches higher. If you guys keep watching, you'll see what's gonna go on. And I've got some secret amendments to add in at the end, so don't turn away. Watch till the end to see the secret amendments I'm gonna to add to supercharge this guy. Looks perfect, right? Give me a thumbs up. Hit that like button if it looks perfect. Put this guy next to him. You're gonna be just fine, little Antonio. Okay, now I'm gonna add in my amendments in a secret order. First, what I wanna do is I wanna add in my compost, the Jake Mace blend that my vegan lifestyle has made. All my vegan food scraps, plant-based food scraps go into my compost tumbler, my Joraform 270, with some carbon source to add to it, and then this comes out, this wonderful looking microactive compost. So I'm gonna sprinkle that down there just like that, just that much, that's all it takes. And there's microbes in there, there's microscopic organisms in there, there's a whole life down there. A life that I don't speak the language of, but I know it's important, as important as humans. So now that's gonna supercharge and jumpstart that microbial life, really important stuff down there. Then I'm gonna get some of the Seamus O'Leary's mix from Shameless O'Leary's Tropical Fruit Trees. Don't breathe the dust. Meditation practice has served me well. All right, that's the Shameless mix. And then to that mix of lava rock, lava sand, and composted mulch, I'm gonna add a little bit of native clay, maybe just two scoops full. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of sand. Just like so. And now just like you would make a stew in your kitchen or make a soup, I'm gonna make a soup of this soil and just kind of stir it up a little bit. 
So now I got the sand mixed with the Seamus blend, mixed with the native soil with the compost, the active compost in the bottom. Because check it out guys, these trees do not want their roots to sit in a sloppy swamp. Just like if I were to sit in a swamp, it'd be kind of fun for like the first 10 minutes. And after that, I'd be like, damn, I'm getting kind of wrinkly. After about a half a day, I'd be like, oh my God, my skin is falling off the bone. And after a few days, I'd be dead. Too much moisture. A lot of people that hike in the Amazon and rainforest, they get a lot of skin rot. Too much moisture. We don't want it to sit in that sloppy muck. But we also don't want it to be native clay where it's compacted and hard like a rock and evaporating the water too quickly. We want to mix. Life is about yin yang, a balance. So we got a well draining sandy soil with good nutrients combined with the native. Perfect stuff. Now let's take this tree out and let's set him in there and see if he's at the proper height. That's going to be just perfect because now the soil level is coming up to here and that's where I'm going to put it in the ground. So now is where my martial arts ability served me well. Planting a tree, a lot of the time is about timing. Timing the weather right. It's August 18th, 2015. It's the heat of the summer. That way this guy's going to get a good six months of growth before any kind of cold snap comes and puts that cold tolerance to a test. I also don't want to put the roots into shock. I don't want to you know, rough them up too much. I want them to be nice and comfortable. So I'm going to cut them out of this pot as opposed to pulling them and ripping them out of the pot. I'm just going to put a little puncture there and slice up this pot and cut the plastic off. Rip this guy back. And there we go. It's gone. He's ready. He's ready. Look at those roots. See that? Look at those roots down there. Looking really good. And let's make sure, let's stand back before I backfill him in and make sure that he looks the way I want him to look. And this is where I kind of, the Vincent Van Gogh of Jake Mace comes into play. I'm like, hmm, looks pretty nice right there. I like it. I'm gonna keep him right there. My wife Pamela is smiling, so she likes it. So now I'm gonna keep him about that level. That way the soil level will be about here to here. What I might do actually, I might give him a two inches more of height. I'm gonna pick him up. Hold him there for a second and just kind of put a little bit more height in there. I want to be a little taller. Now we'll try this one more time. Let's make sure that trunk is straight. Let's get back and look at him one more time. I think that looks about perfect. What do you guys think? Like button, hit it, subscribe. All right. Now, from there, he's gonna grow up right here straight away and fill this corner with a nice bushy mango tree full of delicious red mangoes for me to eat. So now we're gonna continue this process of backfilling. I got some of the Seamus mix. I got some of the native clay. That's my soil, looks pretty good, right? It's like farm soil, nice broken down stuff. No rock, no caliche. A little bit of sand. And now it's at this point in the process I'm gonna add some good stuff, worm castings. These guys are black gold. One of the best things you can do as a gardener is raise worms or have worms in your soil. Look at that. It's fresh worm poop right there. Really nice neutral smell. No smell really. It just smells like the forest. That's what we want. And this is pure steroids, but healthy organic steroids for the tree. This is like taking a wheatgrass shot. And we're gonna sprinkle the worm castings in there as well. And this will give a lot of nutrients to this tree. About that much, we're gonna put some more in at the end here too. We're gonna get back to the Seamus mix. We're gonna go for more of the clay. Native. We're 
We're gonna go for a bit more sand. Now I'm gonna try to mix it up a little bit. Just kind of break it up, mix it up so that everything is kind of combined into one soil. You know what, that looks pretty damn good. I've been gardening pretty hardcore here for four years now and it's taken me four years to figure out how to do this stuff and I bet in four years from now, I'll be even better than I am right now. Now here's one of the secret amendments I'm gonna add. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna add all of them right now. You guys waited long enough. Secret amendments. Number one, this is a special compost made by my friend Jay. This is a really active compost, active compost that he grows himself at his house and he's a nut about soil. He's probably the best soil mine in the, in the state. I'll say it right here, I said it. So we're gonna sprinkle some of Jay's special soil in here. That's got some good microbes in it. I got another bag here full of microbes. Look at that mycelium in there. All that white civilization. That's Jay's special mix right there. I'll put a link to Jay's Facebook page below this video because he hooked me up with this soil. Thanks, Jay. Then I got some of this stuff, and this stuff is the probably the most important ingredient here today. This is the mycorrhiza. And I'm gonna put this mycorrhiza against the roots of the mango tree because the mycorrhiza is also that colony of microbes. And this will start the process of those microbes living beneath the soil and what they'll do is they'll procreate and they'll stem out and they'll pull nutrients from all over the place. There's evidence of mycorrhiza under the ground pulling nutrients to trees from hundreds of miles away. It's pretty amazing stuff. So we put some of the mycorrhiza in there to give this guy the ability to transfer good roots to his hole. And now we're gonna finish it up. Put a little more of the worm castings. A little more of the Seamus mix. A little more of the native clay. And a little more of the sand. Go back to the Seamus mix. I'll put Seamus O'Leary's Facebook page in the description below this video too because he hooked me up with that soil as well. A little bit more of the native. And let's stir it up. Look how that looks, looks really good. It's fun to sweat and get dirty and get away from Facebook and the computer sometimes. It makes me remember that I'm still alive and I'm still an animal. And we're gonna finish this hole up and get it to the top of the soil level, which is right about there, by adding a little more of the worm castings. Adding a little bit more of the Seamus mix. I think Seamus sells these for five bucks a bag. And we're gonna finish it off with two more shovelfuls of the clay. Now I'm gonna get my hands in there. Get dirty. And I'll make sure to wash them before I kiss my wife. <laughs> You guys, that looks pretty darn good to me. One thing about this wooden stake that's in here, I'm gonna also take this wooden stake off because these are good when the tree's in the pot, but what this stake can do is it can actually be like a crutch that never allows the mango to become strong. So we're gonna take this wooden stake out and I'm hoping that he can hold up on his own. And it looks like he's not yet quite strong enough to hold up on his own. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this wooden stake back here, right about here. And I'm gonna take this stake and tie the Antonio to the stake 
just to make sure that he's nice and straight. But this way, he's still able to make a little bit of movement in the wind on his own. And that wind pushing this guy from side to side will help to strengthen the trunk, just like going to the gym and doing curls or bench press. Strengthens your muscles. This will allow him to kind of blow a little bit, move around a little bit, and then hopefully in about a month, I'll take that stake away and he'll be good to go. Also, we might still have some monsoons here in town, so this way, he's also able to uh, withstand those monsoon winds until they disappear next month. Look at that. Looks perfect. It's perfect. Don't troll me in the comments. Haters gonna hate and players gonna play. But there's one more really important thing we gotta do for this tree, and it's coming up right now. The last step of planting this tree is the most important step, more important than the mycorrhiza and it's the mulch on top. We have to create a forest-like environment for this tree. I was just in Kauai last month, the garden island of Hawaii, and there was mangoes growing all over the place. I did some epic hikes, and these mango trees were out in the middle of the forest in Kauai, off the trail, growing on their own with hundreds of mangoes dripping off of them, and there was no manure on the ground. There was no chicken poop or cow patties, or steer manure. What there was, was broken down trees, fallen trees, leaves. There was mulch, grasses, all veganic growing methods from Mother Earth in the form of mulch. And so we had to try to create that environment just like Kauai does for this tree. So I'm using some hay here. And this hay is locally bought in town from the Western Ranchman. And hay is really spongy, good at trapping the moisture in the root system, but also it creates a great ecosystem for worms. That was my uh, education I got from Jay. So there's some hay on top to help get those worms in. And then we're gonna take this wood chips and mulch that we scooped off in the beginning, and we're gonna sprinkle some of these wood chips and mulch back on top. And all of these wood chips and all this mulch, there's leaves, wood chips, and other kinds of mulch in here, and it's all made locally and dropped off at my house for free by tree companies and landscapers who cut it down the same day they dropped it off. So now what's happened is we've got a raised berm creating a water basin. We've got a spongy mulch layer on top that's going to help retain moisture. It's going to allow the microbes and the bugs and the roly polies and the worms and the other bugs down in there, the earwigs and the ants, to thrive. And they're going to help to make this soil very fertile. I'm going to save money on my water bill because it's going to not evaporate as fast. And we're going to have a healthy tree. And I'm going to eat mangoes right in front of you guys in about a year from now from this tree. And I'm going to tell you how good they are because I'm investing in myself right now. I'm investing in my land. I'm investing in my yard. I'm investing in my health because this tree's not growing donuts, it's not growing pizza, it's growing mangoes. Very healthy, organic dessert that's fruit and it's going to protect my body against degenerative brain disease, heart attack, stroke, diabetes, things like that. You couldn't have a better hobby in the world than gardening because you're outside getting sun, getting fit, using your strength, you're learning how mother nature works, how mother nature lives and breathes, and then you get to eat the benefits of the healthiest food on the planet. And in order to put minerals into that food, into those mangoes, and make it truly the healthiest food on the planet, we're gonna add some azomite rock minerals on top of this mulch. This is the micronized version of azomite. You can also add this in the soil. There's no reason why I didn't, I just put it on top today. Just a little bit of a feel. And then as I water this guy, it's gonna drain into the soil and put minerals, over 70 different minerals and trace elements into the soil. So azomite, the A to Z of minerals including trace elements is one of my gardening secrets uh, when I plant my garden and my trees. The final stage is watering this guy because now he might be a little stressed. We gotta give him a good drink. And I didn't water him this afternoon. I didn't water him before. I let him dry out for the afternoon. I watered him early this morning. And that way now he's ready to drink in all these new nutrients in his hole. But luckily I have a supercharged version of water because I got a koi pond over there that you guys have seen in all my videos. My koi fish are in there and they're producing 
water that's filled with fish poop. So this hose right here is tied to a pump that's actually in the koi pond and it's pumping the koi water. See how it's a little bit of a light tint of green? That's all the fish poop. A little bit of algae fish poop. Good stuff for this tree. So I'm gonna water this guy with pond water. It's gonna supercharge him. It's a Jake Mace vegan athlete secret right there. Put this guy right in here. I'm gonna spray it down first just to kind of get the whole mulch and soil wet because water is the catalyst. It's gonna start that microbe action in the soil. And then once I feel like I've wet the top, I'm gonna set this guy right about here. I'm gonna wash my hands off. This pond water that I put in there earlier, right on top, nice and carefully, not to waste any water. We're in the desert. And boom, we're gonna let this water sit on this guy for about five, 10 minutes until that hole is completely flooded. And then it's going to disperse into the land and drain out. So we have a nice drained soil. I would argue this is the best soil in the state of Arizona right now. Nobody's got better soil than this. Prove it. Give a video of yourself planting a tree. You know, a lot of my friends who are gardeners and guys who are better gardeners than me, they grow this way as well. And um, I'm hoping that you guys who are expert master gardeners are proud of the soil I made and proud of the fact that we're trying to grow edibles and do so in a sustainable way. Thanks for watching my video. Don't forget that if you guys want to be sustainable and save the planet, you got to do two things. You got to go vegan and you got to grow your own food at home. I can't wait to show you guys September's update of this Antonio mango tree and I'll show you guys a monthly update here at my Vegan Athlete YouTube channel. So make sure to share this with all of your mango loving friends and gardening friends. Subscribe to my channel. Check me out on Instagram at Jake Mace Tai Chi. Like me on Facebook at facebook.com slash jakemace.taichi. Join my online gardening school. It's just five bucks a month or 50 bucks for the entire year. And the gardening school is pretty awesome. And it's at jakemace.com. And you can also get on my email list and a lot of other fun stuff, including gardening stuff at jakemace.com. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.